Hey, Bass Geek here, and you've been asking for it, and today, I'm going to give it to you. All right, guys, you've asked for it a hundred times, and so today, we're doing a keep or call on the JB Custom Rod that I bought specifically to use for topwater. Now, we'll go over everything, guys. You know, to me, you know, honestly, reviews, I know you guys have been, you know, asking about this rod and asking me to do a review on it. But guys, I just don't think you can take a rod or a reel out fishing once or twice and give an honest, hardcore, best and worst review on it. So I've had this thing for about eight months now. Uh maybe nine months at this point. And so I feel like I understand the rod. I put it through enough because I'm rough on my equipment. You know, that's the one thing I can say about me. If it's going to hold up, if it's going to last, you'll know it with me. So we'll go through this. I want to mention two things first, guys. It's getting close to some cooler weather. Notice my hoodie. So please make sure you go out right below this video there's a whole line you can actually go there you can just type in shop bass geek it'll bring you up to teespring i don't have the new hoodie in yet but they are on the site i'm going to get one so i'll show you what it looks like but guys make sure you go out get you a hoodie for this cold weather fishing that's getting ready to come in these cool fall mornings when you're going to use these sort of top waters so it, it helps bass geek everything that i make from the t-shirts and there's stickers out there. There's Bass Geek Nation apparel out there. Go straight back in to the channel. He goes back into purchasing stuff for giveaways. It goes back into purchasing stuff to make the videos. Guys, it's just supporting the channel. So if you don't mind, if you can, please pick you up some Bass Geek apparel. Let everybody know you're part of the Bass Geek Nation. Now, that being said, another way you can support the channel is the Fish Life app. Guys, the Southeast community, okay? That's where I'm at. You want to see the places I'm going to be fishing topwater this fall? Then you need to make sure you go and you subscribe to the Southeast community, okay? You can add some of your spots to help the old bass geek out. And I need all the help I can get because I'm not getting a fish like I normally like to do it. But, guys, I know the lakes. If you're in South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, or Kentucky, make sure you go out to that southeastern community and subscribe. I'll be sharing a ton of the waypoints that I've found and I've fished over the years. We'll be hitting a lot more of those lakes. Fingers crossed next year. You may even see us fishing a lot of those lakes a lot more of the time because I might have more free time. Anyway, all that being said, let's jump in to the keeper coal on this rod. All right, guys, as you can see, I color coordinated with my TRC covers. Guys, as I always say, make sure that you get your TRC covers. You can see these things don't slide right off. It takes a little bit of energy to get them off. And again, for you bank guys, man, best protection in the business. That is a hard, hard tip. Again, everything I talk about, there'll be links in the description below. But for right now, for those of you that have not seen the spiral guide, you can see it right here. You'll notice how it wraps around to the bottom. Now, so the big seller on this, of course, is casting distance and fighting the fish. Now, I will tell you, I bought this for my topwater walking baits, okay? This particular rod is a seven foot. Basically, it is a medium heavy. It can support one eight to seven eighths ounce lures. It is the Hornet. 10-17 okay so now let's let's talk about it the spiral guides i know you're going to want to know really the basic stuff 
How does it affect casting? How does it affect uh, fighting the fish? Before I even talk about that, I, I want to say I've, I don't have this paired up with a you know higher end reel either. This is just a lose LFS. It's a six eight to one, and you know one of the selling points to this rod was casting distance. And guys, if you've watched any of my videos, you'll see I can cast one of the walking baits a mile. Now, what really surprised me, because to be perfectly honest with you, this rod is on the stiffer side of medium heavy fast. So it is a little stiff. So you'll, you'll have to adjust. Now, the rod I had previously was a medium heavy moderate fast. And so it had a little more tip. The one thing that you'll learn is that when you're casting a stiffer rod, you really need to point at the target. When you're casting a rod that's got a little more tip to it, you kind of stop early and let the rod tip bend and, and toss that lure the rest of the way. Uh, but being on the stiffer side, now if I had it to do over, I would probably buy the same rod and see if they had a moderate tip. And one of the reasons why, and this is probably just me, more than the rod. So you'll see I got a buzz bait. If you haven't seen the video where I fall in the lake and lose my buzz bait rod, this is not my buzz bait rod. This is a walking rod, a walking bait rod. Uh, you can use this rod for a lot of different things. It'd make a great spinner bait rod. Um, it, it's a good buzz bait rod. But because it's a little stiffer, I was a little less accurate with it on, on cast. Now, when I'm fishing a walking bait, a lot of times I'm just making bomb casts. I'm fishing it out over points and that sort of stuff. You know, I still could fish it very well up in the shallow stuff. You know, I could, I could put it where I wanted it. I just had to make some slight adjustments in my cast. The other thing is for a treble hook bait, I would probably want a little more tip. Now that, again, that just comes with, you know, getting a uh, different setup in the rod. So, you know, that's just personal preference. You guys may pick this up and absolutely love it. And, and I do love the rod. It's just what I want to use it for. The rod itself, the backbone is a little stiffer than I'd like. And even on the hook sets, that's one of the things that I had to do is really pay attention and let them take the bait. And then I really had to make sure that I played the fish because with the stiffer rod, there wasn't a lot of give. Now, again, they make, you know, rods that are a little softer. And for what I was using it for topwater, you may want to go down a step, maybe a medium fast action would work a little bit better or a medium moderate fast action or a medium heavy moderate fast action is what I meant to say. But the one thing I will say about the spiral guides, um, walking the bait, you didn't notice any difference. So, you know, there was really no difference in the way you had to move the rod to walk the bait. As far as the spiral guides go, does it increase casting distance? I'll be honest with you, I have to say yes. And what really amazes me is that I even cast like the Spook Juniors, the smaller walking baits, and I could still get them out. And this rod on most regular rods, as stiff as this rod is, there's no way I could have I could have made the cast with them. So does it improve casting distance? I'm going to give it a slightly yes, especially with, you know, a standard LFS. I mean, this is, you know, it's just a workhorse. It's not the freest uh, reel, but it's a great bang for the buck, you know, reel at $100 or less when you can find it on sale. And so the spiral guides to me, I mean, that really was the first thing that I noticed was casting distance and 
so I'll have to say, I mean, it, it did seem to improve casting distance. I mean, it, you know, on the bait, especially I wouldn't have thought that with, like I said, the stiffness of this rod. This is a medium heavy, fast action, and it's a little more on maybe, you know, teetering on that extra fast action. All right, fighting the fish or playing the fish. Does it seem to help in playing the fish? You know, I didn't notice, you know, there wasn't a real noticeable difference for me. Um, I could see where, by the time you get to the tip of the rod, having the guides on the bottom of the rod could actually help and help keep it away from the core of the rod, okay? I didn't lose a lot of fish on it. So maybe with the, the, the stiffer action, having the guides on the bottom, maybe that helped that situation. Uh, I'm not gonna give you a thumbs up or thumbs down on that. Like I said, casting distance, I have no doubts that it really did help. Now, one of the other selling points was the rod handle. And I know you guys were talking about wondering if uh, when that got wet or you got you know out in the summer heat if that was going to be slick because this is hard this is not a foam it's actually hard now their big selling point on that was the fact that you can feel more now did i feel more you know with a top water that's really hard to say you know i haven't fished a jig or anything like that with it and uh, this would be a good little rod just to cast a jig around too so uh, it might be something that I try later on to put it through some further testing. But uh, with a top water, honestly, you know, I, like I said, I can't go either way. There was no noticeable difference. Now, as far as it being uh, slick or when your hands got wet or when, when it got wet, guys, I'll, I'll be honest, the way they contour, it fits your hand. I will say this, it fits your hand so well. It never got slick. I never felt like it was going to be, uh, you know, sliding out of my hand or it was going to slide out of my hand. Uh, never was I concerned about that. So, you know, jury's still out on the composite handle. I'd like to test that a little more with some, you know, maybe some bottom bouncing baits to see if it transmitted. Now a stiffer rod is generally gonna transmit a little more when you're dragging that stuff across, at least in my opinion. But, you know, I like the hook hanger. I like the hook hangers being down here. You know, uh, for me, I can put a, a wrap around it. Uh, keeps it up here, keeps it out of the way. So, you know, overall, on this rod, to me, you know, if I was buying it again, I'd probably make a few changes, but most of those changes are just personal preference and what I like for a topwater rod. I'm gonna to continue to use it as my topwater rod and I'll give you uh, some greater details on it later. But the one thing I have to say hands down that they told me is that this thing will bomb cast and it bomb cast. You know, for me, when it comes down to it, basically, is it a keep or a call? And guys, I'd definitely buy another one. I wanna try more of them. I'm gonna buy a few more uh, for some very specific techniques. And uh, I'm gonna give it a, a little more of a try. I wanna really test these out. Again, JB Custom Rods, this is the uh, Stinger series. And uh, I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with the rod itself it's uh, extremely durable i love the uh, galvanized eyes so again this is a keeper guys make sure you go down everything will be in the description the rod the reel uh, i'll put a few of the baits that i've used on this but make sure you go check them out jb custom rods again it is a keeper uh and i just want to do some more investigating on some different styles and different uh actions that they have and we'll tell you what we think about those as we get them all right as always questions and comments down in the comment section below guys 
Any questions you have about this, put them down there. I'll make sure I answer them for you as best I can to the best of my knowledge. As always, like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure you ring that bell so you get the notifications when these videos come out. As always, you guys rock.